All right. Today our champion, Paul Berger of Hopedale, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of John Kibbe of Lynn, Massachusetts on Campbell Pin Bowling. Hi everybody, welcome once again to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis and I'm glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling total pinfall determining our winner. Each of our bowlers takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. They'll also take home some money. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 of that goes to the winner. $350 goes to the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string. Obviously, should they tie, then they would split that at $25 apiece. Other opportunities for our bowlers to make more money, I'm sure most of you are familiar with. I'll remind you as the program goes along. We have a $50 gift certificate here from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. That will go to our March of the Day, the bowler with the most marks. Okay, let's meet today's bowlers. All right, John, I want you to... Look at that camera so they can get a good look at you because you're on for the very first time here. First time. And uh, I know that you're very calm, cool, and collected about it all. <laughs> the handshake feeling? <laughs> uh, well, I have found out one thing about you, and that is, first of all, that uh, you're single, a swinging bachelor. That's and uh, uh, also, that when you had your roll-off for your first appearance on the show, you started off uh, with four strikes in a row, is that right? Yeah, the second string you did. How yeah. about that, huh? Yep. And had you tried before to get out here? Oh, yeah, qu uh, quite a few times. Come in second twice, third a few times. Those okay, you're here. And so yeah. we gave you an easy one today, Paul Berger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Paul, Paul, of course, you rolled uh, against Steve Reno last week, and it was a big battle, but you wound up with a 421, and you're planning on coming back again to see us in August, aren't you? Well, I'm going to try, either with that score, or maybe I can even better. That's the, that's the spirit. Okay, we'll get underway right after this. Good luck to both of you. John Kibbe making his first appearance on our program. Right on the head pin, unfortunately two full, punching out one and five. And right down the same spot again. So it's uh, obviously a, a very disappointing beginning with just four pins down. But obviously John is a good bowler. He has a league average of 119. He has a high single of 197. His high triple is 475. And the roll off, which is five strings that we discussed, so close to pulling it off. He got everything except the seven pin. He had a 650 in the roll off. It's a nine. Now our defending champion, Paul Berger of Hopedale, Massachusetts. On for his second week and overall, 37th appearance on our program. Paul's league average is 128, and they keep toppling for him even though he missed the head pin and went off to the right. His high single is 191, his high triple 493. And he made it. So Paul begins with a spare. Here's the fill. Six, leaving one. No, wait. Three more go down. It's a nine fill as the one toppled into the two and into the four. Now he goes for the 10 pin, and he has it. So Paul Berger begins with a pair of spares. Challenger John Kibbe, Lynn, Massachusetts. Three, five, six, and ten on the right, and seven over on the left. Got everything except the five pin. Right. 
Another ten. As I said, John lives in Lynn. He is the manager of the Peabody Metro Bowl. Two full again. Over on the left, two, four, seven, eight. On the right, three, ten. It's a seven box. Paul Berger trying to make it three marks in a row. Seven is the fill on his spear. However, he has a difficult task because the pins that he's looking at are the seven, three, seven, ten, and wood over on the left. He did not get the key. Object pin, which was a three. It's an eye. Almost a hammer. Everything down except the seven pin and favorable wood right next to it. Now rolling away. And he's all over it. So with the bonus ball still to be thrown by Paul Berger, we will pause for our first check on the scoreboard after four boxes of the first string. And in pins already down, it is Berger 55 and fifth box first string. Still getting spin hits and not getting any uh, any wood to help. Still chopping wood. So it is another seven. He has a spare leave, his first. And he makes it with the 4 8. Now Paul Berger working on another spare. And he gets the fill of 8. Time call. Ralph Stewart wants to check on a piece of wood that definitely is this side of the deadwood line. And the usual hand for Ralph. Paul missed the five. He had a five nine for the leave and did not get it. And and left it again. So it's a nine. One, three, seven, nine, ten. With wood. The corners are still there. It's an eight. Now our challenger, John Tibby, on for the first time and has his first mark. This will be the fill. Seven is the fill. He winds up with a split. Four, seven over on the left. Six, 
excuse me, the ten pin over on the right with three pieces of wood, about where the six would be. A ten. and the nine pin. That's a tough shot. What he tried to do, obviously, was to get one and nine, but he was unable to. So it's a six. Now Paul Berger comes back up again. Ready, go. Don't forget, just three more weeks till the Mass Bowling Association 100% handicap tournament for women and men. When for men and women is <laughs> going to begin on March 31st and run through May the 19th. A seven box. All member cattle pin bowling centers are now distributing the information, the flyers, and the entry forms. Everything down except the kingpin, the five. He has it. This year, of course, in the tournament, a hundred thousand dollar tournament, and uh, a new 100% handicap tournament. All right, John Kibbe up. John got a break as the seven went down, so he has four horsemen right side to work on. Got two of them, but left the six and ten. It's an eight. Still with the state tournament, boys and girls will be competing also in a separate youth state tournament starting April 14th. If you need an entry form and a brochure, your nearest MBA center has them, or you can call managing director Bill Bolton. I'll give you his number in a moment. Two full spread eagle. Call Bill at 617-933-4, and then MBA, the letters MBA. Now, that's 617-933-4, MBA. All right. John Kibbe working on the spread eagle gets part of the right side. Still has left the three pin. And has two, four, seven over on the left. And he leaves the goal post, the two and three. gets everything down except the seven pin and another piece of wood comes up this way which has to be picked up by Ralph Stewart. Once again, two marks in a row, three marks in a row, as you know, in the same string, any combination of strikes or spares establishes a bonus of $50. Big nine drops. And the six pin is set up with wood in front of it and in back of it. So he has it for $50 in bonus money. Paul did well last week. Picked up about $400 in bonus money. Oh. 
And give him six more. So Paul picks up $50 for three marks in a row and another $50 for winning the first string. Also $100 in bonus money as he has taken a 55-pin lead after one, 141. In the middle string, our defending champion leads it off. Here's Paul Berger. He has a side saddle triangle. It's made up of the two, five, and eight with wood in between. Yes. So Paul begins the middle string with a spare. Bonus. He gets seven. And he has the one, the two, and the four. Two full on number one. An eight box. Now John Kibbe making his first appearance on our show. And in case, and I'm sure some of you are wondering, how does that 86 string compare to others? Oh, tough break here as he gets side by side, four and five and seven and eight. If you wonder, for example, if that's the lowest single string that we've ever had, it is not. The lowest ever rolled in competition here in the 31 and a half years was a 77. And uh, always in deference to the bowler who rolled it, he shall remain nameless. get a break. It was a beautiful hit and everything went down except the 10. Ralph Stewart is down there waiting to see whether he's going to have to clear a pin. Now he indicates that it is three or four inches behind the deadwood line so it must remain there. John Kibbe begins the middle string with a pair of tens. Now Paul Berger. Two, four, seven on the left, three, six over on the right, and wood in back of the six pin. An eight box. Al Giulio keeping score on the electronic scoreboard today and Keith Williams keeping score on the big board for the folks who are here in person. Don Riley is our coordinator and statistician. Everything down for Paul Berger except the six pin and wood in front of it and wood in back of it. He makes the spare. As you know, Ralph Stewart is our lob line judge and referee. Phil Rubin is our producer and director. Our challenger, John Kibbe of Lynn, not having too much luck. Makes it for a fine spare. Spare in the third. Well, 
Here's the fill on that spear. He gets a nine drop. Now he has the ten pin to pick up for another. Too bad, he missed it. Not by much, but he missed it. So it is a nine, and again we take a check on the scoreboard after four boxes of the middle string. Where the bonus ball is still to be thrown by Paul Berger. The score after four here in the middle string. And they're kind of spread out. He's got number one, seven, eight, ten, and wood in front of the ten. The ten is gone. But that's all. An eight bar. Our crew today, Dick Erickson, Roger Rice, Ray Smith, Skip Peabody. Paul leaves two. The six and the nine. Too far to the right of the six. In post-production videotape, George Ellard and Doug DeWitt. Nine. Here he is, today's challenger, John Kibbe of Lynn. It's a thin hit to the right side, but a few more pop down. Got the head pin standing, plus that he has the four, seven, eight, ten. And three pieces of wood in back of number one. It, and he used it perfectly. eight, but he's got the tough one with the five and six. Made a good effort. Moved it in the right direction, but not quite enough. Ten. Now Paul Berger, who is our defending champion. Leading by 45 in the match. One, three, four, seven, nine, ten. Everything went except the seven. A ten. triangle over on the right hand side made up of the six nine and ten got just the nine and had he been able to to touch the six it probably would have gone sidewall and perhaps would have come back but it might have come back on too sharp an angle so he leaves the six pin John Kibbe, today's challenger. No wood to work on. Four, eight, and ten. Got the four and eight. Nine. Next week's challenger, Young Boss Kelly. A 
Diamond to work on left side for John Kibbe. Two, four, five, and eight. No wood. Nope. Another win for the Diamond. Ten. Ninety-five through eight. And he has picked up ten pins. Now Paul Berger for his final two here in the middle string. Paul began with a spare and got a pair of eights and another spare. Since then it's been an eight, nine, ten, and nine. Nine and ten, yes. The wood helps, but it doesn't always. Ninety-five in the night plus plus two half was to right punch out three and nine he almost came back and spared it everything down except the ten and that as you know was after a punch out he gets the ten box. 107. John Kibbe with an opportunity to pick up some bonus money for winning the middle string. Run him down, John. 136, that's what he's facing. And unfortunately, he missed the head pin. Got the three and the six. One oh five. So he needs three pins to pick up fifty dollars in bonus money. So John Kibbe has won the middle string and picks up $50 in bonus money. Four horsemen left side and he makes it for a spare in the tent. 115. And a bonus ball to be thrown. And more. 124. So $50 in bonus money goes to John Kibbe for winning the little string. And with his 124 opposite the 107, the score right now after two is Paul Berger 248, John Kibbe 210. Our challenger, John Kibbe on the line, lane two here at the fairway, beginning the third string. He has a triangle. It's the three, five, and six. And oh, everything went except the five. But we've seen that happen so many times with those tricky triangles. They look so easy, but they're not. It's a 10. Five and eight. Wow, everything went down except the seven. It looked as if they were all going to go. Pair of ten. Paul Berger, our defending champion. Three, six, and seven. Yeah. 
Made it. Six. No wood. Two, four, five, and seven. Got a pair of them. Bounced that one off the football line. It's a ten. Challenger John Kibbe. Everything down except the ten pin. He has it. Spare in the third. Seven is the fill, but he winds up with three of them still standing on the back line. Seven, eight, ten. Two pieces of wood, well, it, it, for a moment it appeared they were going to be two up against the seven, and maybe eventually they will. One is staying there, the other one now is rolling up there. Or is it? at the 10, but the 7 wouldn't go. Pinning very well so far in the third with three 10s and a spare 7. Paul Berger. Our defending champion is faced with a 1 and 10. Two pieces of wood behind number one, another in front of ten. And he does not waste an opportunity like that. So spare in the third. Spare with seven for the fill, leaving the five, nine, and ten. One piece of wood in front of the ten. Just one out of there. It's a nine. Forty-three pin lead in the match with six boxes to go for Paul Berger. Paul is married, father of two boys, and is a purchasing manager for Sun Microsystems. Jackpot is up to five hundred and fifty dollars. The one seven ten winner will get first try at it. And then the runner up. If we have a hit, then we start all over again at fifty. If we don't, we keep adding twenty five dollars every week till somebody walks away with whatever has accumulated. Home viewer jackpot is now at one fifty. Three six ten on the right, seven over on the left. He wiped out the three six ten, but the seven is still there. Not anymore. John is pinning extremely well. He's not getting marks. He's only had one here in the third string, but in every box, he's knocked them all down. Paul Berger is left with three as the object pin. Then there's the five, and behind that, the seven, nine, and ten.
five is the fill, leaving four horsemen left side and the opposite corner, the ten. Got one and two, leaving four, seven, and ten. So it's a nine box. Now John Kibbe in the seventh and eighth box, down by 47 pins. Two and five. That's what he needs for a spare. And he's all over it. Ralph has to call time again and get a piece of wood which has come way back. For a spare, John is facing the four, seven, and eight, one piece of wood just to the right. He used it, and he has two in a row. Two marks in a row. Now Paul Berger. One, three, six, and seven. One piece of wood just to the right of the three pin. And he makes it a beautiful shot. The fill. Maybe a little bit too full. He gets six, leaving two, four, seven, and ten. There's a piece of wood. It hasn't decided where it's going to stop. Right now, it's about where the five would be, rolling a little bit away towards the right now. Obviously, my description is for all of you who are either blind legally or otherwise, or non-sighted, so you can get the picture and enjoy it as much as those of us who are fortunate enough to have our sight. So it turns out to be a seven. It is an eight. I wasn't sure whether he had pressed the button before it fell or not. John. Give me three, six, seven. Oh, too bad. Actually, a piece of wood acted as a roadblock there. So John has uh, nine boxes in which he has knocked down all the pins, either tens or spares. Going to be tested a little bit here to keep on doing it, maybe, with a four, seven, eight, and ten. There are three pieces of wood, one between the four and eight, one to the right of it. He got it. 121. Here's the fill. Just four. John Kibbe congratulating Paul Berger and Paul also offering words of encouragement to John.
Four horsemen, right side and the seven pin is what is still standing. Nice shot for a spare in the ninth. So Paul now has an opportunity to pick up another $50 in bonus money by winning the third string if he can beat John's 125. Big eight. And he has done it. Already at 127, which gives him another $50 in bonus money. Twenty-seven, which, as I say, gives him fifty dollars in bonus money for winning the third string. Also, Paul Berger is, has successfully defended his championship and will be facing the challenge of young Bob Kelly next week. Final score: three seventy-five, three thirty-five. Anywhere from 700 to 720 would win it. And this card uh, comes from Groveland, Massachusetts, on Yale Street. Warren Wagner's guess is 749. So we will add another $50. Now our high low jackpot keeps climbing. That's up to 550, Paul. How about that, huh? Just for knocking down three little pins, huh? All right, John. Nope. All right. John, if you stand here for me, please. I have to get you. Uh, Bill Rubin, our producer and director, wants to get a good shot of you, see? So he wants to get that camera to just get you. Good angle on your face and all that stuff. <laughs> well, listen, it, it's out of the way. The first yeah, one is out of, the, out way, of the way, and the first string is out of the <laughs> way, and we won't talk much about that. But I, I'll tell you, what a comeback. You left 21 pins uh, on the lane in the first string, and then in the next two strings, you only left two pins. That's all. I mean, you were pinning all the way. I think once I started with that one five box, I think I... Well, of course, that would have scared me. I would want to go home right then, I think. Okay, you get $350 just for showing up and $50 in bonus money for winning that middle string. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. come back and see us again. Thank you. Yep. All right. Paul, you get the big trophy from the Ace Trophy Company. You get the $50 gift certificate from True Value. You get $700. You get $150 in bonus money. And you get Bob Murphy. I mean, Bob Kelly as your calendar next week. All right. Don Gillis for the whole crew.